Hi, welcome back. I'm Annie Nash with the Unleash Advisors at EXP Realty, and I'm here with Craig Nash at the Unleash Advisors at EXP Realty, and we're here today to talk to you about how to succeed in real estate in 2023. So Craig, what would you recommend since the market is forever changing? How would you what would you recommend an agent do to stay relevant and to succeed in real estate in 2023? Well, the first thing I tell every agent that is out there is to don't be a secret agent. And what I mean by that is if you're a real estate agent, everybody in the world needs to know that you're a real estate agent. I mean, the market has changed from 2021 and 2022 to, two th to now. I mean, back in 2021, we were just basically order takers. People would call up, hey, I want to buy this house. They wouldn't even look at it. Boom, you know, they're writing a contract, you know, and to be honest with you, if you had a listing back then, you're probably getting multiple offers. And I mean like 30, 40 offers at a time on a house. So it was really just put a house up. It's gone in two hours, six hours at the most, and you have multiple offers. So it was really tough back then for buyers and sellers just because it was this chaos. Um, but now I really love the market because you can actually – Go look at a couple of houses here and there and decide which house you want to put an offer in on. Um, but in order to succeed, you have to let everybody know that you are a real estate agent. You can't just, you know, wait for the phone to ring anymore because that doesn't happen. So yeah. you just, you know, got to let everybody know. Yeah. So what's, what's another thing that you might suggest to people? So right now, technology is incredible. So I think uh, real estate agents right now really need to be on top of the technology game, everything from social media to marketing to AI, which is artificial intelligence. Um, we've been doing a lot of training lately on artificial intelligence and the amount of uses in it are incredible. Um, but knowing how to really harness that technology, uh, I think is going to be really powerful this year. Um, so, I mean, it can do everything for you. Yeah. Lots of things. I think AI will really set you apart as a real estate agent. Yeah. If you use it appropriately. If you use it appropriately. Yeah. yeah. And we are starting to do that. So yeah, it's made a difference in our yeah. business for sure. So even though technology is really important, is there anything um, that on that level people should uh, pay attention to? Well, there's also the old school way, you know. <laughs> I mean, you need to actually get out there and develop the relationships, meet people face to face, um, mm -hmm. have coffee, invite them to coffee, um, keep in touch nonstop with people and just, just make sure that they know that you're in the business and there to help them and possibly change their life if they need the real, real estate purpose um, purchase. Yeah. So, I mean, that is a life changing event in somebody's life is when they buy a new home. Yeah, those so, authentic relationships yep. yeah, very make much a big so. difference. Yeah, I mean, I, I've always said that, uh, you know, it's not a transactional relationship. It is a, a personal relationship over time. And we've really taken the opportunity to develop relationships in our own business. Most of our clients are part of our family anymore, it seems like. Yeah. Um, we do a lot of things with all our clients, even after the closing day and stuff. They just, mm -hmm. you know, they become really good friends. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. What else would you? Uh, so say? I think agents need to have a real, a deep understanding of today's market. Uh, like you mentioned earlier, the market has changed significantly from a couple of years ago to what it is now. Um, I've heard a lot of people say you just got you have to go back to basics. You've got to go back to your roots. But to me, part of that is understanding the current trends we're in. Um, so looking at what does the market look like, and when I say that, I mean. How many houses are on the market? How many have been listed? How long have they been listed? How many are going under contract? How many are actually closing? I've seen a lot of, like you mentioned, you we were order takers. And as fast as you could write a contract and get it submitted and hopefully you got into a house because people were moving here that quickly, a lot of times people didn't even look at the house. Mm -hmm. um, so we're not so in that you, now. So how do you find out all that information? What do you do specifically for, for yourself to So one of the things on that I do, um, at least, I say once a day, but it's at least three or four times a week, I'll log into my MLS and I'll look and see how many new listings hit the market that day within the last 24 hours how many listings have gone pending in the last 24 hours, and then how many are closed. So it kind of gives you an idea of 
where, you know, how long are houses sitting on the market? Because one of the things I can see when I pull the new listings is how much of it is it land, how much of it is either new construction or resale. And that, you know, paying attention now to new construction, getting into the MLS is kind of a little different than last time. Yeah, new construction is a whole lot different than it was two years ago. I mean, they're starting to give whole kinds of incentives to buyers and you know, they're yeah. actually starting to pay commissions to real estate agents again <laughs> that bring them a buyer. Yeah. Um, a couple of years ago, they really didn't care. You know, they were busy all the time. So yeah. um, their whole market's changed quite a bit too. So um, understanding new construction is very valuable. So on that thread, um, one of the things that we have started doing is actually going back out and taking the time to talk to the agents out there at the new construction mm-hmm. so we know what inventory is available to us. So I would say that that's been an important thing. Um, it, it adds to our uh, relationships that we talked about, but it adds to our understanding of the market around us as well. Right, right. Very much so. So what's a tip that you would recommend? Um, the other thing is, is that you always need to stay on top of your, of your skill level. I mean, you need to really invest in yourself a little bit. This is, you know, this is a great year to hone your skills as being a real estate professional, whether it's, you know, learning something new on a weekly basis as far as some kind of training class, you know, at EXP, they offer all kinds of training from anything mm-hmm. under the sun. You can learn about it. So um, that, that's one thing that I really take advantage of is, you know, honing my skills on a daily basis or a weekly basis, um, learning something. Um, I like going to real estate conferences and seeing what's actually out there in the real mm-hmm. estate industry and seeing if there's anything that's really changed or is coming on board. But that's another thing that I really like to do. Um, what else is there out there that you would recommend? I would recommend um, looking at your network. Um, now is the time really to build your network, not just with other real estate agents, but also with your professional partners. So when I say that, I mean your handymen, your plumbers, your roofers, your electricians, all the people that we work with on a day-to-day basis when we're going through a transaction for our clients. So if they're under contract and they've, you know, got a repair addendum that says they need to get something fixed, we need to have those contacts to be able to provide that to them. And when we provide them with a recommendation, it needs to be somebody that we've seen their work, we know what their work, they, they've got uh, positive reviews, and they've done good work for us. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a time to build that network um, because the other thing is they may need to buy a house as well, or they may know somebody, and you can get referrals through through your professional network. Yeah, that's very important. Yeah. Um, I'd even take that a little step further, even to go out and find networks of like, uh, who's your human resource managers at companies and who's, uh, yeah. you know, financial advisors out there and, you know, even like attorneys and stuff like that, that deal in divorce and all that stuff. Cause there's usually a transaction or two out there that you can find that way. Yeah, that's good. So is there anything else? Um, I think those are some pretty good tips, Um, but I just want to remind everybody that real estate is a journey. It's not just a destination, and continuing to improve yourself along the way is a great way to get there. Um, Stay proactive, stay engaged, and stay positive, and you will be able to succeed. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you in the next podcast, and look out, world, we are unleashed.